Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to the Adobe Photoshop design series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on and we are going to be creating our first document inside of Photoshop. We're going to be going over all of the different settings and all of the different presets that we need to make sure we're creating our document and our image in the right way. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new document. Just go to file and then new. If you wanted to you can also just press ctrl and n. If you start to use these um, these little hotkeys, it's just going to save you a little bit of time. So when we do press new document, we've got this big page over here and there's lots of information to talk about. So I'm just going to try and break it down for you guys just to make it really, really simple. So mostly over on the left hand side here, you can see I've actually got my recent items. If you guys haven't actually used Photoshop yet, you might not have these. But these are basically resolutions that I have worked with previously and you know, if I want to get quick access to those same resolutions, those same sizes for our document, then I can just go ahead and click one of these. So for example, if I often use, you know, create images that are 1920 by 1080, for example, my YouTube thumbnails, I could just go ahead and press this custom one here for 1920 by 1080, and I can just start documenting and creating all of the stuff that I need to do straight away. But enough of these presets for now, the most important thing is going to be over on the right hand side. These are the preset details. This is what actually defines the layout and the size and the quality of your image that you're about to create. So first things first, you've got the name over here. So you can name this to anything you like. For me, I'm just going to call this uh, new image one, you know, call it something relevant, but beneath this, you've probably got the most important things. You have got the width and you've also got the height over here as well. And by default, this is gonna be set to pixels. This width and height is pretty much how much space it's gonna take on your screen. For example, the image behind this, the YouTube thumbnail that I've got here is 1920 by 1080. So if I wanted to, I could have this cover the whole space of my screen because it's the same size as my monitor and it won't really lose any quality. Whereas if I was to set this to a really low width and a really low height, and then stretch it out to fit my monitor, it wouldn't look good. So you guys have actually got to think a little bit about where you're actually going to be putting your images, how you want it to be displayed. Um, for example, if you want it to be a web image, so if you want to have it on the web, you might want to have it low resolution so that it can load quite quickly. But you've got to find the right balance. But that's sort of for another video for now. Um, most of the time, if you're doing artwork or anything like that, you'll probably be given the width and the height. If you guys wanted to, you could change the pixels over here to something like inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, or peakers. I'm not going to be going over points and peakers at the moment, um, but the important ones are sort of pixels, inches, centimeters, and millimeters. Now, if you're going to be working with centimeters and millimeters, that's only really going to be something that you guys are going to be doing if you're working on print stuff. So if you've got a set amount of space, you know, real space, physical space on the wall, or, you know, a leaflet that you're trying to print out, it's got to be a certain size, you would just do it in inches or centimeters or whatever you're into. Beneath this, you've got your resolution. This is also quite important as well. This is essentially the amount of quality that you are going to have on your document. So by default, for whatever reason, mine is set to 72. Most things are going to be displayed on a pixel per uh, pixels per inch of about 300. So just go ahead and set that up. If you want to make the file size a little bit smaller, you guys can just turn this down and that will be making it better for things like web images and so on. Beneath this, you've also got your color mode. So you've got your RGB color, your grayscale, and a few others. Now, there's only really three that you're gonna need to know about here. RGB, which is basically gonna be your red, green, and blue. And it pretty much brings these colors in from those three colors that you've got. We'll go over that a little bit more de in a little bit more detail later on. The one above it is grayscale. That is pretty much black and white and whatever colors are in between there. So sort of shades of gray and so on. And then beneath this, we've also got CMYK. This is a color mode which is often used by print companies. We're going to be touching that, up, touching up on that in a little bit later on in the series. It's not too important, but if you just want full color for now, just go ahead and use RGB color. So lastly, you've also got your background contents over here as well. You can just basically choose the background color. You can have white, black, or you can even define a background color 
just by setting background color, use the little picker here and then just choose a little color. For example, if I wanted to have a little bit of a gray on the background there, I could do that and there you are. Now, I'm not going to be going into the advanced details for now, it's not too important, but what I do want to show you as well before I go any further is we've actually got a whole bunch of presets that we can use inside of Photoshop. So if we go across the top here, we've got this little panel. We've got photos, prints, art and illustration, web and a few other bits, and basically we can use these designs you know to create some content for example we could use this cover photo for facebook we could go ahead and modify that and upload it and the reason why we would use this is simply because it's got the right resolution the right size and they have made it in a way that it's going to display the best it possibly can so it's definitely worth having a look at some of this stuff to see whether or not it's actually usable for you guys because there is some really cool stuff in there for example you've also got some modern website layouts in here modern web banner layouts um, if we go into art and illustration we've got some stuff in here as well for example we've got this chalkboard mock-up if we wanted to we can go ahead and open that up just press download if you've got access to adobe stock um, if you don't don't worry about it i'm not going to go ahead and open it up for now i'm just going to leave that for another video or even let you guys just go ahead and download these and experiment with them but for now just go back to the recent tab and then just press create and that will be our first document and inside of this document we can then begin creating all of our shapes all of our text just like I went over very briefly in the last video now I'm going to be going over all of these tools on the left hand side later on in the series or really over the next few videos if you guys want to see that we've got our we've got our first document created already if you guys want to go through all of the tools and learn how to create all these really really stunning graphics then stay on with the series anyway guys hopefully this is a great point to end the video we have done quite a bit already we've got you guys on your way to creating these graphics so we hopefully understand sort of what is what the sizes that we need and have given you guys a little bit to think about anyway guys once again thanks for watching stay awesome keep creating your boy vertus signing out